everyone, welcome to Learning Literature with Purva. In this video, we are going to discuss the poem The Canonization by John Donne, who was a great metaphysical poet. Now, I got a couple of requests for this video, and that's why I am here with a detailed summary and analysis of the poem The Canonization by John Donne. So, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Now, the metaphysical poets such as John Donne, Robert Herrick, George Herbert, Andrew Marvel wrote during the 17th century. Now, these poets wrote about subjects that could not be answered by science, such as love, religion, God. They used the figure of speech conceit in their poems. Now, conceit is an extended metaphor that compares two dissimilar heterogeneous objects, such as two lovers separated by distance with two legs of the compass, as seen in John Donne's poem, Valediction, Forbidden Morning. The metaphysical poets also used the Carpe Diem theme. Carpe Diem means seize the day. So this theme was also used in the poems of metaphysical poets. One such poem is To His Coy Mistress by Andrew Marvel. Samuel Johnson was the first person to categorize these poets as metaphysical poets in his book The Lives of the Poets. Samuel Johnson said that the metaphysical poets exhibited wit by joining incompatible ideas to create startling images. So as we can see, Samuel Johnson was not a great fan of the metaphysical poets. On the other hand, T.S. Eliot praised John Donne's poetry in his essay, The Metaphysical Poets. T.S. Eliot uses John Donne's poetry as the best example for unification of sensibility which means fusion of thought and feeling. Now, after we have talked about the metaphysical poets, let's take a look at the poem, The Canonization by John Donne in detail. Now, canonization is the process by which an ordinary religious person is declared a saint after his or her death. So, canonization is a ritual in a Catholic Church, in the Roman Catholic Church, where a person is declared as a saint after his or her death. The title of the poem suggests that the poet and his beloved will become saints of love in the future because their love is so true. At the same time, the poem functions as a canonization for the pair of lovers. The canonization poem has five stanzas. It was first published in 1633. John Donne wrote this poem after his marriage with Anne Moore. The poem exemplifies John Donne's wit and irony. The opening line of the poem is, For God's sake, hold your tongue and let me love. The poem is addressed to an unnamed friend. The speaker of the poem declares love as so all-consuming that lovers often forget all their goals and pursuits to spend quality time together. So in this sense, love is asceticism. This is the conceit used in the poem. In the first stanza, the speaker begs his unnamed friend to not insult or belittle him for loving, but to insult him for other reasons such as his palsy, gout, grey hair and his ruined fortune. The speaker is so lost in love that he does not care for anything else. The ruling passion of his life is love. He has no regards for the riches of the world. He does not feel jealous of those who have amassed fortune by working with the royalty. 
He talks about their craving for materialistic gains in a slight negative tone and forbids those materialistic people to not interfere with his love. In the second stanza, the speaker rhetorically asks whether any harm has been done by his love. He says that his sighs have not drowned ships, his tears have not flooded lands, his coals have not chilled spring, and the heat in his veins have not added to the list of those killed in plague. Soldiers still find wars and lawyers still find litigious men, regardless of the intense emotions of the speaker and his lover. Now the third stanza of canonization is the most important. In the third stanza, the speaker says that the world has contracted to his companionship with his beloved. This experience of oneness in love is a common motive that can be seen in John Donne's love poems. The speaker describes the nature of love through various images. At first, he presents the traditional image of the fly and the taper. Taper means candle. The speaker says that he and his lover are flies and tapers. Now we know that a candle burns itself out of its own nature. Similarly, the speaker and his beloved are so lost in love that they don't care to burn themselves in love. Next, the speaker presents three more images of eagle, dove and the phoenix to present the supremacy of mutual love. In the medieval fable, the old eagle soars high up to the sun and gets scorched. It then plunges into a well to renew its youthful energy. This image of the eagle shows the central idea of love that finds fulfillment through dying. The image of the dove has a religious overtone. It signifies the pure and divine love that the speaker and his lover have for each other. The image of the phoenix also presents the idea of love that finds a sense of fulfillment in undergoing pain. We all know that a phoenix renews her youth only when she is burned alive. John Donne uses the images of eagle and phoenix because these birds stand for renewal or resurrection. So there is a line, we die and rise in love, which is paradoxical. The speaker feels crucified to the world and yet he rises in love. The speaker and his lover become saints or martyrs of love. In the fourth stanza, the speaker says that he and his lover can die by love if they are not able to live by it. And if their legend is not fit for tombs and years, it will be fit for poetry. So the speaker says, we will build in sonnets pretty rooms. A well wrought urn can do as much justice to a dead man's ashes as does a gigantic tomb. Similarly, the poems that will be written about the speaker and his lover will result in their canonization. The speaker says that their canonization is without any fanfare and pretensions. They will become saints of love to the future generation of lovers because of their constancy of love in the face of adversity. In the fifth stanza, the speaker says that everyone who will hear their love story will invoke him and his lover. It will become a pattern of love worthy of emulation. In the last line of the poem, the speaker says, Countries, towns, courts, beg from above a pattern of your love. The speaker 
develops a magnificent vision that incorporates the entire world consisting of countries, towns and courts. The speaker uses the image glasses of your eyes to say that the entire world shrinks and becomes reflected in the eyes of the beloved. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found the explanation of the canonization poem helpful. If you found it helpful, then do like it and share with all your friends. And I will be back next week with a new video on a literary work. Till then, stay tuned to Learning Literature with Purva and thanks for watching.